I thank you for uh, coming by this morning, and I'd like to thank Sizeware for the opportunity to talk about something that I'd, I really enjoy, and that's showing lots of case studies uh, in geology in both the Eagleford of South Texas and the Permian Basin uh, Wolfberry Play. Um, Faskin Oil and Ranch. Oh. Uh, this is going to be the outline of my presentation. Uh, I have a lot of stuff. I've given uh, similar talks uh, with this type of data, and it's taken me 40 minutes. So I have to get it done in 15 minutes. So you're going to have to really listen fast, okay? So uh, first kind of things I want to talk about is just some of the general comments. Who is Faskin Oil and Ranch? Uh, Faskin Oil and Ranch is a company in the Permian Basin. Uh, we have over 250 sections of land, uh, and we're uh, right in the heart of the Wolfberry Play. Uh, as you can see from this chart here, uh, Faskin is one of the top 15 uh, independents in the country. And you've never heard of them. And as you can see, as of uh, last year, we're in the top 10 producers of the eagle for, uh, of the uh, wolfberry. And uh, we haven't even drilled any horizontal wells uh, in the Permian Basin yet compared to most of our competitors. Uh, here's an outline of uh, our, our acreage position. Uh, we own both the minerals and the surface. The city of Midland, Texas is right here. And because of our great land position, uh, the company allows me to share with you uh, some of the case studies that we'll have that a lot of companies can't show you because uh, that would, uh, they would uh, lose their uh, technical advantage. So one of the reasons that this talk really started was because we we're uh, several years ago, uh, a lot of companies were questioning the value of 3D seismic in unconventional plays. And I think that if we just kind of sometimes break it down into smaller pieces and say, you know, to shoot a seismic survey, it costs approximately 600 barrels of oil. Now, oil prices have changed, I understand that. But the point being is that for a small price, I believe that we can either steer our wells better for our targets, we're going to have geohazards. And we always think about geohazards being deep in the surface you know, on top of our target basement faulting. But I'm going to show you examples today of geohazards in the shallow at two or three hundred feet that can cause blowouts in your, in your well. Um, a real quick brief about how the wolfberry has uh, increased production in the Permian Basin. Back in uh, 2009 when this just first started, the average production from the wolfberry was about 150,000 barrels. Today the production is over 600,000 barrels. So we've been able to squeeze a lot of oil out of the rock by using these new techniques. So <clears throat> one of the things I like to talk about with, uh, is on the inversion. Um, the Sizeware has just recently released 9.0, and they have a lot of enhancements. And one of the enhancements that I like is um, the, uh, the enhancement of um, when you have your version, seismic version up there, that you can go ahead and go from version to version, uh, and that version to version being, uh, when I typically interpret, I have a, a regular bandwidth extension data set, I'll have a uh, seismic inversion, uh, it looks at impedance, and I'll have a coherency section all open. So now I can just flip between my inversion data set and go over to my bandwidth extension data set, which is now this one has been flattened, but all the settings have been saved for me, and that's really great. Going back to the inversion, uh, later on, uh, either the, sometime in the first of next year, um, they're going to be able to pick at that crossing for the inversion. So, you know, when you pick on your, your typical conventional data, you got your band, your peaks and troughs, you know, you still have some phasing. But when you take your data to inversion, I mean, you have a, a good acoustic boundary and they're going to be able to pick on that boundary. Uh, so then you can go ahead into other uh, uh, interpretations with that and create maps. I can show you now a case study uh, of a couple of slides um, of, a, of a typical Wolfberry uh, uh, sequence that we're drilling here. Uh, the, the Wolfberry has anywhere from uh, 8 to 12 different perforations that we'll place in there. And these wells typically make about 100, where our EUR is around 160 to 200,000 barrels for a vertical well. But when you get conventional pay in your well, that will increase that production dramatically. And so wells that were maybe making uh, initial IP of about 200 barrels can now have IPs of over four or 500. So we're looking at the star right over here. This is uh, the well, uh, it's a zone in the wolf camp that we had 18% porosity in, which is really high. And if, uh, as I said, you know, when I have my typical seismic data sets, my inversion, I'll have a, uh, a, 
uh, an amplitude that I'm highlighting between this case is impedance between 20,000 and, and 60,000. And that's my, my general color impedance value when I'm looking for limestones. If I'm looking for shales, I'll have a different uh, color bar. But by just changing my car, color bar just a little bit, I'm able to pop out that large porosity zone of over 50 feet and 18% porosity. With that, I'm then able to use some of the uh, seismic attributes that are in SizeWare to go ahead and now map that, ma uh, map that interval uh, spatially. So in this case, I took a zone and used their RMS calculation over about 30 mils uh, and then took an average of that. And now you can see that even though we may have a standard drilling position that we typically do, we want to be able to hit these good pockets of porosity and we'll have much better well. So we'll change our drilling program where we see these type of uh, anomalies. Here's another example here where we had this carbonate. We had never, never seen it before. Uh, it produced, uh, we just uh, completed it the other day. It's 500 barrels a day. And again, using the inversion data, we're able to see that. And uh, in this case, what I like to do is uh, another technique that I normally do is I flatten on a surface and then cut up or cut down. And these series of slides show the anomaly and how it grows in size. So I flatten on that wolf camp, came down uh, 12, 14, 16 mils, and you can see how the anomaly changes. And again, we use that technique to kind of high grade our drilling prospects. So as I said earlier, you know, one of the things that we're using 3D Seismic for is for um, identifying fractures and faults, both in the near surface and in the, in the deep. And so I'm gonna show you a couple examples of that right now. Excuse me. Um, so uh, the Permian Basin, our, our target of the Wolfberry usually starts at about 6,500 feet, down to about 12,000 feet. Those are those 12 intervals that we're um, uh, looking to perforate and frack. Um, but this is uh, the cellar of our well that we had recently drilled. And as you can see, we don't have a, a pipe anymore. We, have, we, we blew it out. And what you see on your seismic data over here is you see a small amplitude anomaly at about 2,400 feet. And um, you can see some of the damage. And we were very fortunate that someone didn't get killed. But as, you, as we cut through these next series of time slices, you'll see the circular anomaly grow in size. And again, this is a well bore where it's been shredded, ripped off. And now you can see them very good, very well. So you say, well, that's kind of interesting. You, okay, so you see it on your ranch. What's, what else, you know, is it something that you can see across the Permian Basin? And you can. Uh, a company that we, our drilling company that we share uh, the cost with, uh, Ken Elson, uh, they were drilling on a ranch uh, a couple miles away from us. They encountered one of these air pockets. What these are is this a collapsed feature. Think of it like a Carlsbad cavern. And it's uh, down 2,400 feet and it's filled with high pressure air of nitrogen and oxygen and some other gases. And so when you go into it and you don't have the proper mud weight, you can have a blowout. Anyway, this other company, several miles away, or where they were drilling for another company. They said, do you see it on your seismic? I go, I don't have the seismic, but I have a friend in another company who may have it. They went ahead and they found that same pocket. Uh, I recently gave this talk at the Dallas Geophysical Society and some friends of mine at Pioneer, they went back and looked at their data. They saw it two counties south of us. So this type of a a phenomenon is across the basin. And again, it's not so much that we got the rig all dirty, it's that somebody could have been killed. And so that's something that you need to worry about. It's not just deep geohazard, but also shallow ones. I'd like to go ahead now and show some of the, the uh, slices that we've done, and we kind of went ahead of time. Um, this is now jumping down to the Eagleford, where we're looking at coherency. And again, we have flattened on the Buddha and then have come up through the Eagleford, the low Eagleford, to see if we see any type of anomalies using the coherency that they have. Um, Sizeware has several types of uh, seismic attributes. They have rock solid images attributes, and then they have their own uh, series of calculations. So it's a pretty good sized toolbox of uh, data. So one of the things that we're seeing right here is we're starting to see things lining up. Well, in this well right over here, in this well right over here, when we fracked, 
this well here, we had a communication over a mile and a half away. And so we know that the seismic technique is not going to see an individual fracture. But what we are looking for is looking for fracture swarms. And so using coherency and semblance, these are some of the techniques that we're now using that we can go back to the engineer, find out at what perforation stage they had that uh, communication, and now we're looking to try to map these out. And that will help us in our, our drilling that it may change our spacing. There's been several talks on the Eagleford the last couple of days. And what is the spacing? Is it 330 feet like our neighbors have it? Or is it maybe twelve dollars or $1,500? It makes a difference because we're spending lots of capital. And there's no reason to spend extra capital for reserves that could be captured by other wells or less wells. And uh, another uh, tool, again, is looking at semblance. Now, I know it's very difficult to see, but anybody can do this when you go home. And the point of this slide here is that you know, we look at a wiggle trace, and this is our, our typical bandwidth extension variable area wiggle trace that's on top of the semblance plot. If you were to look at that seismic uh, character of that wavelet there, you wouldn't see any variation. But by looking at semblance and draping that out using their overlay function, you're able to see anomalies jump out in the lower Eagleford. Um, the last thing I'd like to talk about is um, using the, the SizeWare tool to generate our horizontal uh, well paths. What we typically do at, tech, at FASKIN is uh, we'll work with the geophysicists, or the geologists rather, we'll come up with a structure map. And I like to make several structure maps to see the variation by either adding points or using the compaction factor that they have in their depth correction, which we'll show you here in a second, um, and use that as a tool. Uh, I'm going to jump back to the Permian Basin for a second. Uh, back in, 19, in 2011, the 96% of the wells that were being drilled were vertical wells. Today, it's probably half and half between drilling vertical wells and horizontal wells in the Permian Basin. And it's really critical to have those wells in the, in the right spot. And I'll show you some examples of that. And the Permian has experienced the same type of growth as other basins have. The Eagleford and the Bakken, where you have a sharp increase of the number of wells and then it kind of flattens out. Um, so here's a picture of some of the uh, horizontal activity around our ranch, as I said. Uh, we've had hundreds of wells that are thousands of wells that have been drilled in uh, horizontally, Pioneer being one of the, the main uh, companies that are drilling tons of horizontal wells in several different formations. And usually they may even stack them. So off of one drilling pad, they may have a horizontal at 8,500 feet, 10,000 feet, and 11,000 feet. So this technology of pad drilling uh, is we're utilizing a lot in the Permian. And, and this is another thing that companies have done where they have originally drilled vertical wells and then they've come back and to try to drill horizontal wells to capture uh, additional reserves that may have not been drained on the vertical well spacing that they had. So uh, some of the examples of uh, when you're drilling a horizontal well, if you have no seismic at all, uh, sometimes you just don't have 3D seismic. And in this case, we were just drilling well. You can see that each of these grids are 10 feet, and we were just kind of porpoising, trying to find reservoir. Um, that's bad for several reasons. You know, uh, operations people do not want to put pipe down a hole that's, that's porpoising. And again, you're wasting time uh, as far as maybe perforating zones and, and, and time drilling. So you want to know exactly where that, surf, that interval is. Uh, and this well that we drilled, we were in pay for the first half of the well, and the last half of the well, we were out of pay. So we spent days of drilling, and 2,000 feet, that's worthless. Another thing that sometimes happened, uh, in this case, we, we drilled out the bottom. So we're, this is an Eagleford well, we were in a low Eagleford, we didn't have it, our seismic ran out. It's always, we always need just one more mile of seismic, and you can see that we went down and dived into the Buddha. Two stages that we didn't waste money on perforating. Um, Diamondback, and of course this is, is realized by anybody who's doing a lot of drilling, but uh, Diamondback is one company that says we will not drill a well unless we have seismic so over uh, on our deeper targets, or deeper zones. So over 90% of the acreage that they own, they have 3D seismic on it. And they use this 3D seismic to help steer. Jumping back to the Eagleford, you can see all these dots represent people that have drilled around us. So we know how good our reservoir is over there. And so I'm going to show you now some examples of wells that have been placed uh, by companies that originally didn't have any seismic, and then they came back and shot the seismic, and you can see how much better their wells are. Um, so Swift Energy drilled two wells. They drilled one uh, two years before they had a seismic. That well um, is this one up here. 
and you can see that the yellow is the eagle for target. Uh, that well had an IP of uh, 500 barrels a day. When they did have the seismic and they targeted their interval, they now had a well that was over 1,700 barrels a day in production. So we're going to look at a structure map uh, on, on, and the three wells that uh, Swift has drilled. So here's one of the first wells they did. Again, the, the red is the best part of the Eagleford. This is an inversion data set here. Uh, you, so you can see that they were in the Eagleford the entire way, but they weren't in the best part. That well did five million a day, not a bad well. But when you stay in your zone, you get a well that's 20, 22 million a day. Much better, good geo steering. Here's a well that we did, uh, and this is using our inversion. As you can see, uh, this is the lower Eagleford. You can see that there is variation in the Eagleford. And you can see that we stayed right in that, that zone the entire way. Excellent well. Uh, it's going to pay out in probably uh, three months. And that's a $10 million investment. So we're going to go ahead now and do a little interactive uh, depth conversion real quickly. Uh, I like the toolbox that they have. Uh, you can go ahead and you can do cross plots and look at how your time depth uh, varies with your, with your well control. Um, you also have, when you're converting, they, you can use a K factor for compaction. And in this example, we did it where we did, uh, where our wells, we had five wells that we used for our depth conversion. And then we also ran it one with compaction. You'll also have the ability to add points to your, to your ends. If you can use some type of uh, uh, relationship, maybe you, you know where the, uh, you have a horizontal and you know where you think you are as far as the top of the Buddha and you have another point, you can add points even though they may not be in the survey. There's the points. And then what I like to do is I like to go ahead then and get my, my base map out and I look at those contours and how they overlap and uh, see which of those different structures makes sense. Can we zoom that up a little bit? Maybe just zoom up this area over here. So you can see there is, you know, this is the, these are the same contour intervals, but you can see there is some variation. And it, depending about how much velocity you do vary it, you can see great change. And that's important because what we're going to do next now is we're going to go ahead and create a well path. So we're just going to go ahead and drill where our horizontal uh, plan is, as far as uh, where the engineer, uh, the drilling guy is, said we're going to lay it out here. And we'll go ahead now and give him the, uh, the points for his uh, structure map, or for his uh, well plan, I'm sorry. So we're going to go ahead and we just use the well planning icon. We uh, select by the well and we uh, go ahead and draw our well path, staying in the best part of this uh, reservoir. This map over here is on the Buddha. We have choose whichever grid that we think we have the most confidence in. We then say, OK, fine. We want to go ahead and create this well path using the depths from our seismic grid. So in this case, We've got, there's our points. We're going to subtract 50 feet off our grid, come up, and now we have a well path that I can go ahead and give it to our, our drilling engineer, X, Y offset, measure depth, and true vertical depth. So here's the result of one of the wells that we drilled. This is the 5D, came in really good. Those are the points, and that's the resulting well path staying right there in the lower Eagerford. Um, another well we drilled, again, we had an inversion and that shows the well path, and you can also go ahead and put your uh, log curves on there. Uh, in the 9.0 release, they also have the ability to put your micro-seismic points in there, so you can see how those micro-seismic events uh, look on your grid. So I, I hope that answered your questions. There are a couple of handouts, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call, and uh, thank you for your attention. I really appreciate the opportunity.